All right, so it is 5 days after Savannah was born. So she was born Tuesday, July 11th, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 5 days. As it went like this, it reminds me that's how she she is when you you tried to um, <laughs> feed her. <laughs> She's trying to reach for it and she and James laughed so hard it was hilarious he went ah Savannah <laughs> uh, so I started off with a laugh um yeah this video is literally about again my brain is incomprehensing that's not a word it's a made up word uh, another physical miracle that's literally charted in conjunction with the volume of people praying and then watching numbers like blood pressure, which don't lie, numbers don't lie, go way down over the course of three hours. So as more people learn, more people pray and the numbers keep going down. Um, okay, so this is my story. Um, I believe very much prayer works. Not only does prayer work, but public prayer works. Uh, community prayer works. Group prayer works. Um, I, there's got to be something in the Bible. I don't know what the scripture verse is, but when a volume of people are praying, uh, twice in my life now, in this pregnancy, that I've experienced this. You can look at my other video when I was disabled for five months, uh, needing care, couldn't speak very well, um, cognitive disorientation, dizziness, lightheadedness, needed someone to watch James, watch me um, on gym work, needed help going to the bathroom. I mean, I was disabled. This situation is situation number two, which is miracle number two. I just spoke with the nurse, the head RN. Um, and she, she definitely doesn't, um, uh, uh, it was just interesting to talk with her. Um, it was kind of befund befuddling or befounding, refounding, whatever the word is. Okay. All right. Let me get to it. What time am I? I'm already in two minutes and 43 seconds. And you're like, what happened? What happened? Okay. So I'm taking a video because I still can't believe it. And I need to document this while it's still fresh in my mouth. This video is the first time I'm getting it out of my mouth. So I'm still processing the reality of it. Um, which I was called my mom first to let her know. And then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Let me hang up and let me do this video. Because I think this has the power to hopefully encourage you. That's the only reason why I'm sharing this. Um, for the power of prayer. All right. Savannah gets delivered July 11th. July 12th, my blood pressures start to spike into the danger zone, into what would be preeclampsia. Uh, watch, being very watching of a preeclampsic, um, which is very common. I don't know if it's common, but it happens after pregnancy. And with the blood pressure, I was in the 160s, the 170 sometimes, 176 I saw, um, 150s, pretty common, pretty common, basically, basically consistently this week I was 150s and then 160s and then sometimes 170s. Then the lower number was always, I would say this week in the 80s, but most of the time when I saw the blood pressure, it was in the 90s. So you have like 160 over 98, all this sort of stuff. So um, I was on I was on watch this week from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I was discharged Saturday because um, I had a lower reading, uh, a normal reading uh, of blood pressure. I don't remember if it was like I don't remember if it was like one forty over eighty five. I don't remember something like that. But the doctor said best medical maternal resources team uh, for delivering babies, caring for patients. 
I've talked with so many nurses and they're like, they're actually the best doctors in the state of New Jersey, that's hands down. Um, they're the smartest doctors with how they practice medicine and they have pioneered a C-section um, technique that other doctors don't do where they create what's called an invisible line. But it's the expertise of medicine and they said that they've had so many miracle uh, deliveries because of the level of knowledge of knowing how to care for patients. Um, I didn't know that, I just learned that today. I say this because uh, it's really cool and really great hands, okay. Um, all right, so today I'm in joyful spirits, just like I am right now. This is exactly how I was today. I went to church first time with our little daughter, Savannah, five days old, our son, two years old, and we had the best time. Grandma and Grandpa are here, Grandma and Grandpa Chandler are here. Um, we have the best time. Um, and it was so much fun to be with our family and it was just awesome. And uh, we come home, grandma and grandpa, they go to Walmart to get some stuff and Jim and I are about to just lay down to take a nap. The kids are sleeping, this is great. And I'm supposed to take my blood pressure regularly um, at least two times a day, but the doctor asked me to take it again because this morning it was high. And then there was a number that was low, or not low, but normal. So I took it and I was like, oh no, uh, anything 150 I need to call the doctor about or up. And it was 160 over 98, 166 over 93. We call the doctor and he says, um, I need you to come into the hospital. We have to take a look at what's happening. All right, so, you know, he just got discharged yesterday with the baby. And now something's medically wrong that they've been monitoring all week long. And I have to go into the hospital. So, I'm scared. My son, he had a dream about three weeks ago, a nightmare, he came in running into our room and he's two. I didn't know kids uh, would dream so vividly with nightmares to remember, that's the thing. And he repeated this nightmare yesterday when I got home and he would say, mommy, don't go, don't leave me. You're going up into the spaceship. I see the light, you're going into the spaceship. Maybe I didn't say I see the light, but you're going up into the spaceship. And so something above, he's going up and there's something like seeing me travel away. That was his nightmare and he said it again last night. So I'm like, oh my gosh, is that a premonition that I'm gonna die? So I talked with Jim about that. And he says, you're making that up in your mind that you're associating death with that premonition. I said, you're absolutely right. He's an imaginative, uh, all of kids are imaginative. Okay. We get to the hospital, I'm, I'm really scared trying to be calm, I'm praying, I'm praising God. Um, you singing worship music, we're singing shout to the Lord on our way down, um, we're praising God. Jim's praying over me. And then I start activating a prayer group. I start, I, I, I wrote a message, like a text message, and I just copied and pasted and sent it because it was just easier to do that. And I sent it to um, several very close friends prayer groups were very close friends, prayer group. And I didn't want to call my mom because I didn't want her to get scared. But my mom is who taught me how to pray. Because her daddy taught her how to pray. I didn't want to scare my mommy. But I called her and I shared with her what's happening. So she reached out to her prayer team and she began praying. My sister so sadly had preeclampsia, both pregnancies, and it was very difficult for her. <sighs> so difficult for her. And God moved mountains in healing prayers. Healing prayers we saw. And so my mom started activating prayer groups to pray. We get into the hospital, I'm nervous. They have to do IVs. 
We're gonna have to take blood work to understand what's happening. We have to do tests to understand what's happening. Um, the IVs, the nine yards. The expectation by eight o'clock, we would know what's happening and I could potentially start magnesium to with the diagnosis of preeclampsia, which is what the symptoms are lined up to look like. All these people are praying. Our church, Rescue Church, is praying. And again, I, I, I'm not reaching out to everyone. I'm reaching out to the, uh, the key people because I'm so frightened and I don't want to be stressing myself reaching out to a bunch of dear friends groups. I just I'm trying to pass on the, the prayer need to help because I believe in the power of prayer, especially after the, the physical healing in my first, first five months of being disabled in this pregnancy. So I'm gonna show you a snapshot at the end of this video of the numbers of my blood pressure starting where they've been all week long for five days or for four days actually and then when this prayer group of a community group prayer gets activated group activated prayer not a few people it's possibly right now probably a hundred people or plus i'm thinking that might be the amount started praying maybe 50. i don't know definitely 50. I don't know, but as people learned, more people prayed. And and as the time continued on, again, I'm the same spirit, how I am now. It's how I've been um, all morning, <laughs> all week here at the hospital. So my mood hasn't changed, but prayer has changed. And today, we saw the numbers within arriving start to drop down every 30 minutes every 30 minutes they took new blood or not new blood new pressure blood pressure and they continued to drop down and as they continue to get into beyond normal like normal 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 More people are praying because more people, you know, you know, when you get a text, you don't look at it and then you look at it later and then you say a prayer. And my dad got this really cool, really cool feeling of peace. He sent me, he goes, Jen, I threw one up. And my dad said, God's got you. You're going to be okay. And a peace came over my dad, which was awesome. And then Jim's mom and Jim's dad, oh, we wouldn't be able, to, we, Jim and I physically, without Nancy's help as well, our dear friend, best friend, we wouldn't be able, it, it, it would be, I don't know, I don't know how we could do it, but they're with uh, Jenny, grandma and grandpa are with um, James, our two-year-old, and Savannah, our five-day-year-old infant right now. And they're the, the greatest caretakers, just like so many of our family and friends are. And um, they're caring for them. And they immediately knew how to because they were with us for a day to see how Savannah care is. And Nancy immediately came in and helped. Um, God has allowed me to produce breast milk um, that I didn't have with James. And it's actually abnormal the amount of breast milk that I'm pumping two ounces on each side in one sitting. Uh, that's rare for someone who's five days deliver. Um, I didn't understand that until they told me that. And like God had that prepared, that our baby girl is able to be fed breast milk, which is what we hope, we hoped. Uh, not that other, not that any other feeding is wrong, but that was our desire. Um, and then the power of prayer. And then the, Test results come back completely negative. There is no preeclampsia detected in my body. As Savannah <laughs> tries to eat her pot, drink from the from nursing. No 
preeclampsia in my body. The blood pressure is gone to normalcy. The only thing that was detected in the blood that can identify what is going on was my liver has a teeny, 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 slightly elevated enzymes. And they said, they said, there's, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about that. So all of that to say is, I shared this with the nurse saying, well, what's causing my blood pressure? This, and I shared with her about the prayer. And she goes, she goes, I, she just, it was, it, it, it's befuddling. But what I know that I know And I still, I, my spirit, like, Lord, help my spirit of disbelief. Like, did God just give me another physical miracle? Looks like he did. God, thank you. Thank you for being my loving father, for being our loving father. Thank you, God, so much. Thank you, God, so much for healing my sister, bringing baby Boaz into the world healthy after she went through a very difficult preeclampsia. Thank you for Savannah being healthy. Her five year five day year old. Thank you that my C section was healthy, even though how frightened I was in the spirit of peace and joy that came over me from rescue church praying. Thank you. Thank you for my husband being available to be here and hold my hand and pray. This is something that Jim said. He started praying. He goes, because I said, I'm scared. And he started praying against the spirit of fear. And then he looked at me and he goes, Jen, you are the one to bind the spirit of fear. Tell the spirit to leave now. And so I prayed in the authority of Jesus. It's through the power of Jesus. Nothing can attack or be resident. The power of Jesus and the sword of truth, as James says, Bible man, the sword of truth. We rebuke that spirit with the word of God. The Lord has not given me a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, love, sound mind. And James said, stand here and rebuke it. I sit here, lay here and rebuke it. And I did. My friend Faith also spoke into my heart couple weeks ago before Savannah was born when I was feeling fear um, about the C-section. She says, you've got to speak and cast this fear away when I was speaking. So fearful about our new home. Um, you've got to cast the spirit out. This is, this is not Jesus. And you have the authority in Christ to cast it out. But we have it. You don't need to rely on other people. You have it to cast it out. And so I sat here with Jim a few hours ago and I cast that spirit out right here in this hospital bed of fear. And so, July 16th at Hackensack Meridian Health in Hackensack, New Jersey in the maternity ward in the high-risk room. Came in where it was pretty certain I had preeclampsia or something. When it's not treated, it can be deadly. Um, with proper treatment, medicine, and wisdom, um, it's treatable. Praise God but you have to catch it early. Praise God. <laughs> My blood pressure went down to normal and then the blood results came back negative. 
look at these numbers of the blood pressure drop. Again, all week long in the 160s, 170s, over ranges between 80s to 90s. Some 150s, I think one time I had it in the 140s. And that's when they discharged me the WAP watch. People started to pray today, but it was community prayer. A lot of people prayed within the last few hours. And as more people started to pray, as more people learned to pray, open their emails, open their text messages, um, heard a message from my mom, message from Jenny, Jim's mom. All of a sudden, the numbers each 30 minutes of my blood pressure came down. And as I learned from Michael Levine, numbers don't lie. People lie. <laughs> we don't want to lie, but people lie. Emotions are deceiving, but numbers, they don't lie. If you go like that, that's two, one, two. If you take a blood pressure, the counts of your heart rhythmic beat, uh, uh, that doesn't lie, uh, that is real. And so, as I close this moment of this testimony, is that you have to reach out for prayer. You don't have to do anything. It's This is my experience, reaching out for community prayer. Believing in the power of prayer. After going to our sermon today by David Ireland, at the new Christ church that we had went to, the sermon was about believing in the power of prayer and spiritual attack. It was perfect because I just went back to what he was talking about. Rebuking fear that we have the power to rebuke in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, not by ourselves. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is the one that casts that fear out. And this is the result. So, okay. I'm going to say, like, my blood pressure is, like, still 139 over 76. This coming week, consistently, I will 1,000% call it a full-on physical body miracle. Number two in this pregnancy. So, I'll tag another video on next week to see what goes on. Right now, in this hospital room, with the blood results and the monitoring of blood pressure, and this is definitely a physical miracle right now. So, wow, God. 